Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. In this lesson, I'm gonna talk about what scale to play over what chord, specifically choosing what scale to use when you know multiple scales that are supposed to work over one chord. So this comes from a question that I got uh, from somebody. So I'm gonna uh, read their question and my answer to it. And then I'll go a little deeper and I wanna tell you a story about how when I had this exact same question and um, the person that I looked up to and asked uh, this question to and what their answer was. Um, so the question comes in from Steve. Thank you for writing a question in. He says, hi, Jared, I have a theory question that I hope you can answer. I often play lead improvisations with backing tracks, often blues. I found that when I'm playing the minor pentatonic, it is often more interesting when I add the two notes and play the full natural minor scale. So the pentatonic scale is a five note scale. The full natural minor, minor scale is a seven note scale. Also, uh, a, called a diatonic scale when you're, when you have all seven notes. He goes on, same situation with major pentatonic and the major scale. My question is when does the full scale work and when does the tune demand just the pentatonic scale? Do you just decide by ear or is there a musical theory rule here? I'll read you my answer since I wrote it to him and then I'll go uh, deeper on uh, some examples and actually play uh, differences so we can hear them in a jam. I have a loop set up for that and everything. Uh, so here's my answer. Great question, Steve. The answer is that it completely depends on what you want to hear. There actually is never a time when pentatonic is the only scale that works over a chord because pentatonic is always coming from a full diatonic scale, the complete seven note scale. Playing pentatonic is a little bit like using chord tones. It's a selection of notes within a bigger collection of notes, notes which is the scale. So you can choose pentatonic anytime or diatonic anytime or chord tones anytime, completely depending on what you want to hear. So I wanna play you some examples of this, but let me tell you this story of when I had this exact same question. So I had a friend who I really looked up to who was a killer guitarist. This is when I first was trying to figure this stuff out. I had been playing guitar for a while, but really, really didn't understand how to improvise, really did not feel comfortable with the idea of improvising, yet I knew a lot of the theory of what was supposed to work. And I know that this is a common situation to be in. We can learn, oh, this scale works over this and this works over this, and we yet we still don't feel like we are making music uh, when we're improvising. So these are two separate things that we need to be kind of working on at the same time. So um, I was hanging out with this friend. They were sitting there playing guitar, just, just ripping on the guitar, just sounding amazing. Um, and uh, we were, you know, in the context of, of playing music. So I knew we were on um, a G7 chord and I asked him, I was like, ah, how do you, like, how do you know when to play the blues scale over a dominant seventh chord? Because I know that that's what works. I know it's supposed to work. I know people do that all the time. Or the mixolydian scale over a dominant seventh chord, which is the full seven note diatonic scale, the fifth mode of the major scale. In any case, the point is there's two different scales. I knew they were all supposed to work. How do you know, when are you supposed to use one? when are you supposed to use the other? And this particular friend of mine is like super, super kind of laid back musician style, just being like, oh, what do you mean? You just, you play the one you want to hear. And, and this answer of his just like burned into my brain, like, oh, there's not, there's not a case by case where you're supposed to play one or the other. Like you literally, you're supposed to play what you want to hear. And so this is just this foundational thing to kind of constantly remember and come back to and it's so much easier said than done but if we can study these options so we can get them in into our fingers and our, our hands and our ears and then try to work on when do we actually want to feel something different based on what we want to actually hear so i'm just going to make a little loop here of d7 just a little groove see if that loop feels good one time around, then we're gonna play a couple scales over it. Specifically, okay, the loop sounds good. Specifically, the D mixolydian and the D blues. Completely different flavors, and those are the two scales that I was wondering about in that question, in that story, many, many, many um, years ago. They get really different sounds. So we want to uh, get used to how they sound and how they feel, so we actually play them when we do 
want to hear them. I have a lot of videos on scale options. I'll post links in the description to a few of those. There's one in particular that is how to know what scale to play over what chord when you need options for that, that I did very recently. There's another one that is 23 different scales that work over dominant seventh chords. You don't have to know all those, but it's cool to know they exist. And I, it was fun making that video where I demonstrate through each one so we can hear what they sound like. It's kind of a fun video, but let's just talk about these two. Mixolydian, D mixolydian happens to be the same thing as G major. Don't worry about that theory right now. If you don't know that, just know, okay, these two different scales are supposed to work over this chord. How do we know when we play one or the other? So let's just listen to kind of the quality of, of each one over this loop. So here's Mixolydian. We get this. We get this kind of sweet uh, major scale-ish sound. You know, if you're ever wondering, you know, what's what's the feeling I'm getting from this and when do I want one or the other? Think of like what guitar face someone would make, right? This one I think of as kind of like kind of that little smug smile face and then the blues scale is like it's like the attitude. It's very interesting if you play the Mixolydian which is actually where the dominant seventh chord comes from, then play the the flat three. It, it sounds like a wrong note. It is a wrong note. It's not in the scale or anything, but yet it's so so commonly used in the pentatonic, minor pentatonic, and blues over a dominant seventh. But that's also why people do this. This kind of like bend, like, cause it's like, oh, something's wrong there. Gotta kind of bend it, not even necessarily bending it into the three, but just like a little bit of a bend and kind of get away from it. that major third from, from Mixolydian. Mixolydian. Blues. There's Mixolydian. So this opens up the door into a way to practice these that we I think we don't often think of, which is the kind of absorbing and, and kind of studying and feeling for, how does this make me feel? And do I want to hear this? And when do I want to express this with my feelings, you know, with the communication in music that I'm, that I'm grasping for? I always think of this melody with the Mixolydian. Very kind of a fun, uh, a fun little melody that fits within that scale, and it's just that's so that's so kind of happy compared to what we might get with this blue scale kind of situation. So those are you know drastically different enough that you can sit here and you know create a loop for yourself, use a backing track or something, or or even not, and just kind of come back to that chord and hear that, and then go kind of listen for this feeling and then go for the other one. Because it's one of those things where it's like, how do you choose what to say if you don't know what you want to say yet, right? And we have to play enough to start to learn that we have these tools at our fingertips to then express something uh, when we really do want to. So this goes for every scale option, every note choice option, every collection of notes, chord tones, chromatic notes, whatever, anytime, anytime, anytime. We already know this, but it's a nice reminder, play we're supposed to play what we want to hear, right? And again, it's easier said than done. We're on this journey of always trying to access that. I'm, you know, a good percentage of the time not playing probably what I actually truly want to hear. So I'm always trying to work on staying connected to that as much as possible. One way is I sing along with when I'm playing. Sometimes I have a video about that. I'll put a link in the description, but um, this is a cool, uh, just core foundational um, North Star to be looking looking towards for ourselves. Can we play what we want to hear? And when we're thinking of note selection, there's no wrong answer ever. Anything, even, you know, exploring all of this, any chromatic notes I just played down chromatically just to show they can all fit if you keep moving and you decide, you know, what, what do I want to play? What do I want to hear? So just a powerful reminder, I'm always trying to stay connected to for myself. So I wanted to tell you that story of when I when I first had my friends say, what do you mean? You just play what you want to hear. 
Um, if you need scale options and want to study more scales and just shapes, I have a free PDF of all the most important scales to know on the guitar. It's called the Printable Parent Scales PDF. You can download that totally for free. There's a link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. What I recommend you watch next is my Scales for Chords video, the one I talked about that I did recently for how to find what scales work over what chords with a few really cool uh, tips for how to work through that stuff. I'll put a link to that on the screen here. If you're watching on YouTube, you can also go to the description to get a link to that. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week's video is on how to do smooth, legato scale runs on the guitar. Hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.